Earlier in today's show, I mentioned that anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the United States. Now, it affects 40 million adults per year. This morning we're talking all about anxiety and different ways you can manage and treat the symptoms. Now, Dr. Harry, one of the books that you've recently released is ent entitled Anxiety 101, and that's all about taking the holistic approach to managing anxiety. So tell us what you found in this book. Absolutely. I found that many times what we, we don't realize that our lifestyle is contributing to our anxiety-type symptoms. For example, how many of us get up in the morning and our first breakfast is a cup of coffee? If you're an anxious person, and this is not to say that coffee does not have certain benefits, but for someone suffering from anxiety, coffee may not be the best choice for them to start the day with because coffee will simulate those anxiety symptoms. It can increase heart rate, it can make you feel tremulous, and if you're prone to that already, then perhaps not, that's not the way you want to get your day started. Another thing that I've noticed is that many of us don't sleep enough. We sleep maybe six hours or less because there's so much to do, we've mm -hmm. got so many projects to do, et cetera, et cetera. Studies tell us that insomnia itself actually has an adverse reaction in that emotional part of our brain that actually triggers anxiety. So we're making ourselves more anxious, not to mention less productive when we don't sleep. The, when we are noticing that we're becoming less productive, we become more anxious about that. Mm -hmm. So now we're starting a cycle that is very difficult uh, to break unless we start uh, getting some sleep. Another thing that I've noticed is that many times when we're anxious, Oh, we're under stress, we stop the thing that helps us the most, which is exercise. I know many of us think of exercise as a weight loss tool, and, 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 and it is helpful for that. I like to think of exercise as a lifestyle tool because it does so many things. It increases so many of those hormones that we need to balance our anxiety levels. It increases something called brain-derived neurotropic factor, which is a protective for the brain, but it also, that particular thing also decreases our risk for, risk for depression and anxiety. So we are looking at exercise as a lifestyle tool. It doesn't mean that you have to become a bodybuilder or the next Miss USA or anything like that. Just regularity is what's important um, uh, with exercise. So I always say, look, let's look at our lifestyle first. In, in our life, are there things that we can change? Mm -hmm. Are we in perhaps environments that are really causing this anxiety to be exacerbated and what can we do about that? And that is perhaps where it's really helpful to sit down and speak with someone. Because I say, if you're trying to cope with it yourself, the only voice that you're hearing is yours. Mm -hmm. And that many times doesn't always give you the answers that you're, that you're looking for. That voice, actually, that you're talking about, it can like beat yourself down, <laughs> yes, can't it? Yes, it actually may have the exact opposite effect of what you're trying to to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So establish calming routines for yourself. Massage therapy. Everyone should be happy to hear this. That uh, Studies actually show that massage therapy decreases stress hormones in an individual and can help us to manage anxiety better. So it's not, I, I don't think of it as a luxury. I think of it as part of a treatment plan. Mm -hmm. uh, so essential oils are something else that um, we've looked at and we think lavender essential oil actually calms the body and it's been shown in studies to physiologically do that as well. So these are all things that we can look at and if we need to perhaps do medications or supplements, that's something that we need to talk to our, our physicians about, but they are not going to make up for those other things that we also need to do. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you about that, Dr. Harry, what your take on prescription drugs like Xanax is. Do you feel as a phys physician that that's overprescribed? I think today, and, and perhaps even before today, we might be overprescribing it because Again, it doesn't solve a lot of the issues that are going on. I, I think Xanax, for example, if I'm going into an MRI machine, I'm a little bit claustrophobic and I need something to relax me, to, I think it's, a, it's perfect. Short term, primarily, in my opinion, what it was uh, designed for. It's not designed as a long term treatment. It may start to change the brain chemically. We may start getting dependent on it. Addiction issues may come up. And those same issues that made us anxious in the first place might still be present in our lives. The other thing that we've noticed is that those type of medications don't necessarily give us good, deep sleep, restorative sleep that we need to get. So it may be hindering our sleep as well. So now we've really not improved our condition significantly with mm -hmm. that. So overall then you're saying the steps that 
people need to take to overcome their anxiety. It just starts with lifestyle choices. It should include all the time mm -hmm. lifestyle um, choices. And perhaps if your anxiety, there are varying gradients of anxiety uh, to the extreme of panic attacks. And sometimes those do need to be, uh, to be uh, medicated. But we also need to have management um, issues and, and coping skills established in that as well. And so we must address our lifestyle when we're looking at treating anxiety. Great. Now this is actually the second book that you've released, Dr. Harry. You also released one earlier, which was all about aging well. Which Tell me about that. It's all about aging mm -hmm. well. I called it Live, uh, Live Younger in Eight Simple Steps because we do like steps and we like simple. When our life is so overwhelmed, we like to have it all laid out for us. In that book, what I tried to um, teach everyone is how everything is connected. So for example, why we need to eat well, why gut health is important, why exercise is important, why brain function is important. We're all very concerned today about developing dementia, Alzheimer's, losing our ability uh, to, to think clearly. That's a big concern for many of us. I know it's a concern for myself as well. But I want to be, people to know that there are steps that you can take. It doesn't necessarily always depend on your physician to do it for you. Mm -hmm. I want people to be proactive. I want to give them the tools that they need to be proactive. Mm -hmm. So they can make the changes right in, in their own home. Absolutely, because mm -hmm. we see our physicians once a year. Right. And now are both of these books available on Amazon? Both of them are available on Amazon and bondsandnoble.com as well. Great. Are you working on another book right now? I am, actually. Okay. <laughs> Can you give us a little tease of what a you're A little about? teaser. Uh, this book is actually, I call it, I don't have the exact name all written down, but it's primarily targeted at how to look fabulous from head to toe, step by step. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to reading it when you are finished. Well, so thank you. You'll have to come back on the show and talk I with us. I certainly will. All about it. All right, if you want more information on Dr. Harry, you can just check out the information that you see on the bottom of the screen. Again, it's been a pleasure talking with you, and I hope that people can take everything you said away and apply it to their lives because it sounds like it could really help decrease anxiety. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm going to take a quick break right now. There's more to come this morning. Stay with me.